Hello, welcome to our second screencast in this series on the electrolysis of ionic substances. This one follows on from the last one and it is about the electrolysis of aqueous solutions. Before we start, we're going to just have a little recap of what we've learned about electrolysis. So I want you to pause the video and come back when you've answered the questions. Okay. So we'll go through the answers now. Why do ionic compounds conduct electricity when molten? Well, they conduct electricity when they're molten because the ions are free to move through the liquid and carry the charge. Remember, two things are needed for conduction of electricity. We have to have charged particles and we have to have them able to move freely. Why do ionic compounds not conduct electricity when solid? They don't because the ions are not free to move in a solid, so they cannot carry the charge. Where do the negative ions move to? They move to the positive electrode, the anode. Where do the positive ions move? They move to the negative electrode, the cathode. What carries the electric charge through the electrolyte? Well, the electrolyte is an ionic substance so it's ions. We need to remember this because very a lot of people get this wrong and they say electrons. In an ionic electrolyte, it is ions carrying the charge. What carries the electric charge through the wires? Well, through wires, we've got a metal. So we've got those delocalized electrons carrying the charge through the metal. Okay, so we want to be able to know the products of electrolysis of aqueous solutions. We're going to first of all recall what happens with molten ionic compounds when they're electrolyzed. Then we're going to look at rules to predict what the product will be at the negative electrode when we have aqueous solutions. And then we're going to look at the positive electrode, the anode when aqueous solutions are electrolyzed. Okay, so let's think back to what happens when molten ionic compounds are electrolyzed. So in a molten liquid ionic compound, when you melt it, there are metals and non-metal ions. The metal ions are always positive and the non-metals ions are always negative. Okay, so what charge do metal ions have? They have positive charges. So which electrode will the metal ion move to? Well, they will move to the negative electrode, the cathode. What charge do non-metal ions have? Well, they have a negative charge. So what electrode will they, the non-metal ion move to? They will move to the positive electrode. Ions will move towards the oppositely charged electrode when they are discharged or released. The ions will either gain or lose electrons to become atoms or molecules of an element once again. This can be represented with a half equation. Now you don't need to worry about half equations if you're doing foundation, but if you're doing the higher tier, you do need to be able to write half equations. So sodium chloride, we've got chlorine made at the positive anode. So it's two Cl minus, minus two electrons give you Cl2. There's another way of writing that. You can have two Cl minus arrow Cl2 plus two electrons. So there are two ways of writing that. At the negative cathode, Na plus plus an electron will give us Na metal, which is the element. Okay, just to recap oxidation and reduction. Okay, oxidation is loss of electrons. So when you have electrons and you lose them to the electrode, that is oxidation. So that will happen at the positive anode. Reduction is gain of electrons. So when the metal gains 
an electron or more than one electron. It is reduction. So reduction occurs at the cathode. Okay, so the first part of the ionic compound is always a metal with a positive ion. And the second part of the ionic compound is always a non-metal with a negative ion. The positive ion moves to the negative electrode and the negative ion, the non-metal ion, will move to the positive electrode. Okay, so what I want you to do in a minute is pause the video and predict the product made at each of the electrodes. So what is made at the cathode, the negative electrode, and what is made at the anode, the positive electrode. So pause the video now and come back when you've answered the question. Okay, so let's self-assess our work. Okay, so magnesium bromide, we've got magnesium at the cathode, and bromine at the anode. Lead bromide, lead at the cathode, and bromine at the anode. Sodium iodide, we've got sodium at the cathode, iodine at the anode. Sodium chloride, we've got sodium at the cathode, and we've got chlorine at the anode. Calcium chloride, calcium at the cathode, and chlorine at the anode. Calcium iodide, calcium at the cathode, iodine at the anode. Sodium fluoride, sodium at the cathode, fluorine at the anode. Zinc bromide, zinc at the cathode, and bromine at the anode. Aluminium chloride, aluminium at the cathode, and chlorine at the anode, tin fluoride, tin at the cathode, and fluorine at the anode. So hopefully you've been successful with that. Okay, so that's our first success criteria. Now we're going to look at the electrolysis of aqueous solutions. Okay, so what are the ions that make up water? Well, there are two ions, H plus and OH minus ions. This is how we show how water breaks down into those ions. This is the ionic equation for water forming the two ions. So in an ionic solution, there'll be four types of ion present. Now, up to now, we've only had two when they're melted. We've had the two ions that are present in the ionic compound. So if I've got sodium chloride, I've already got sodium ions and chloride ions. But in addition to that now, because I've added water, I have got hydrogen ions and OH minus ions, hydroxide ions. So I've got two of both types of iron. This is going to cause a little bit of complication because now we've got two positive ions going to the negative electrode and two negative ions going to the positive electrode. Okay, so what we need to do is have a rule to predict what we're going to make at the negative electrode. Now we need to learn our reactivity series and there, there are ways to actually do it. You can do one of those rhymes or things like that. The way that I try to remember is, please stop calling me a cute zebra. Instead, try learning how copper saves good people. You can make up one of your own. Anyway, the rule is, if the metal in the compound is more reactive than the hydrogen, then you are going to make hydrogen because it always tries to make the easiest substance. It's always going to go for the easiest one and the one lowest in the reactivity series is the one that's going to be produced. Okay, so if I've got sodium chloride, I've got sodium ions and hydrogen ions working their way to the, the negative electrode. Because sodium is so reactive, hydrogen is the easiest to form. So hydrogen will be formed at that 
negative electrode. However, if the metal in the compound is less reactive than hydrogen, then it's easier to discharge the metal than it is to discharge hydrogen. So the metal will form. Now, there are only a few cases that this would happen. So if you look at the reactivity series, the four metals underneath hydrogen are copper, silver, gold, and platinum. So if I had copper chloride instead of sodium chloride, I would form copper at the negative electrode. So I want you to pause the video now and tell me what you think the product will be that will form at the negative electrode for each of these if you had these metals in solution. So pause the video now. Okay, so let's self-assess. Gold is below hydrogen, so we're going to form gold. Sodium is above hydrogen, so we're going to form hydrogen. Magnesium is above hydrogen, so we'll form hydrogen. Lead is above hydrogen, so we'll form hydrogen. Platinum is below, so we're going to form platinum. Aluminium is above hydrogen, so we're going to form hydrogen. Silver is below, so we form silver. And copper is also below, so we form copper. Okay. So now let's put that knowledge together. We're going to have the ionic compound here. So again, I want you to pause the video and we're only looking at whether we've got the metal or hydrogen produced at the negative electrode. So pause the video now and come back when you've finished. Okay, so let's self-assess that work. So sodium chloride, you've got sodium present, so you're going to form hydrogen. Zinc is above hydrogen, so you're going to form hydrogen. Zinc is above hydrogen, so you're going to form hydrogen. Gold is below hydrogen, so you form gold. Copper is below hydrogen, so you're going to form copper. Aluminium is above, so you form hydrogen. Magnesium is above, so you form hydrogen. And lead is above, so you form hydrogen. So hopefully you're okay with that. Right, we're going to look now at the positive electrode. What happens there and how do we predict which product formed there? Okay, so the rule to predict the product at the positive electrode for the non-metal ions is if the non-metal in the compound is in group seven or group six, so we've got a fluoride ion, chloride, bromide, iodide, sulfide, or oxide ion, then you will produce the element fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, sulfur, or oxygen. Now, most of the time, it's going to be from group seven. Okay, so in sodium chloride solution, you're going to form chlorine at the positive electrode. However, if the non-metal ion in the compound is not a halide, not from group seven, usually these end in eight, like carbonate, nitrate, sulfate, then you will form oxygen. So for the vast majority, you either are going to form the halide ion, that's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, or you will form oxygen. So copper sulfate hasn't got the halide ion, so you're going to form oxygen. Okay, so what I want you to do now is pause the video and predict from the non-metal ions what the product's going to be at the positive electrode. So pause the video now. Okay, so let's self-assess our work. So if I have a chloride ion, I'm going to form chlorine. Sulfate, so that's something sulfate, I will form oxygen because there's no halide ion present. Carbonate, oxygen would be formed. Bromide, bromine, iodide, iodine, 
nitrate, no halide present, so I'm forming oxygen. Fluoride, fluorine, and sulfide, I would form sulfur. Okay, so let's now do what we did with the negative electrode and let's have the whole ionic name there. I want you to just tell me what would be formed at the anode, the positive electrode, if you had these ionic substances. So pause the video now and come back when you've finished. Okay, so let's self-assess that work. Right, so sodium chloride, you're going to form chlorine. Zinc chloride, chlorine. Zinc bromide, bromine. Gold nitrate, oxygen. Copper sulfate, oxygen. Aluminium carbonate, oxygen. Magnesium nitrate, oxygen, lead bromide, bromine. So hopefully you're getting the, the way that this works. Right, for our final task now, what does I want us to do is tell me what the product at the negative electrode, the cathode, is and the one at the positive electrode, the anode. Okay, so pause the video now for each of these 10 compounds. Tell me what is formed at each of the electrodes. Okay, let's self-assess that work now. So potassium bromide, right? Well, potassium is higher than hydrogen, so we're forming hydrogen. And bromide is a halide ion, so we're forming bromine. Copper's below hydrogen so we're going to form copper iodide to halide ion so we're forming iodine zinc fluoride zinc is above hydrogen so we're forming hydrogen and we're forming fluorine silver's below hydrogen so we're forming silver and chlorine silver's below hydrogen and sulfate is not a halide ion so we're forming oxygen. Calcium carbonate, calcium's above hydrogen, so we're forming hydrogen. No halide ion, so we're forming oxygen. Next one, we're forming hydrogen and chlorine. Sodium sulfate, we're forming hydrogen and oxygen. Copper nitrate, we're forming copper because it's below hydrogen and oxygen and magnesium chloride. Magnesium's above hydrogen, so we're forming hydrogen and chlorine. Hopefully you've been successful. If you haven't, then I'd like you to start the screencast again and see if you just linger on it a little bit longer before you start answering the questions in your learning session. So that is the third success criteria and hopefully you have a better understanding of the electrolysis of aqueous solutions. See you later.